Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. My name is Mary and today's video is going to be some short book recommendations. I have seen several people actually recently post their version of this video where they recommend some of their favorite short books. Um, the premise of this video is that in theory you could read any of these books in a day. I'm saying that there's a bit of a caveat because it depends on how much time you have dedicated to reading, but some of these I really do think you could just sit down and read in one sitting. Others are short, shorter books that you could read in one day or a few days. And basically, I just wanted to recommend some of my favorite short fiction. And I'm not really going through them in any particular order. The only real rule I had for this is that the book had to be under 300 pages. And I have quite a few of these that are actually under 200 pages, which I think 200 pages is like a very good read in one day type thing. Several of these I have actually read in one day and some of these in one sitting. So uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna start off. First up, I have Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. This is a pen name for Shauna McGuire. This is a like middle grade YA fantasy. <laughs> it's a companion to the middle game series by Shauna McGuire if you read those. Stories or parts of this are interspersed in that book and this is now its own series but it follows these two kids who are walking to school one day. They've never met before but they live on the same street. They usually go to different schools but because of some construction they have to walk the same way and they end up trying to take a shortcut and then they get stuck in this sort of magical world. Next up I have Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. This I was surprised was under 300 pages, but it's 280 something pages. And this is my favorite Vonnegut that I've read. This is the book that I read that made me want to read more Kurt Vonnegut's. And unfortunately I haven't loved any of them the way that I loved this one, but this is a sci-fi book about this thing called Ice Nine, which basically turns everything into ice and it's not meltable. Um, so it's a different like compound and you go to this island where Ice Nine has been released and it's about how that could like potentially end the world. I really liked this one. It was very good. Uh, the next book I want to talk about is The Giver and I also have the companion to this which is called Gathering Blue both by Lois Lowry. These are both under 200 pages I believe. So these are really really short reads. They're again young adult I believe or middle grade. I don't know that these really fit into any age demographic because I do think kids can read it. Like I was read The Giver in elementary school by a teacher. I don't think it's like children's literature in the way that like I don't know I feel like sometimes people say something is middle grade and you think that like oh it's for kids and it's just written a way that kids can understand but also like the messages still pass to adults so both of these are about societies in the future and like ways that a society will try to make the world better and then the pitfalls of that and they both follow a child protagonist who I believe is like 12 um in this one I think his name is Jonas and then in this one it's Kira and they're both like coming of age in the society and sort of seeing how maybe society isn't run the like best way that it could be and trying to figure out the truth because in both of these societies there's like things being hidden from the members of the society in order to try to keep it utopian if you will but these are both really really good I again I've read this one multiple times and I've read this one just once but um I think there's other books in this like companion series you don't have to read them in any order they're just like related because they have the same idea if that makes sense. I now have two other books that I sort of consider related in my brain so I have The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Sorry that there's an ugly sticker on this um, and then I also have Between the World and Me by ta Coates. Both of these are written as letters to a family member of the author and they're both written by black men telling their other black male family member about what it's like to exist in the world as a black man. This one I believe was published in the 70s. Oh, 1962. And this one was published 2020, 2018, something like that, like more recently. So these are, a, this is a really interesting like pair to read because you can see how some things are different and then some things are not different at all. And you can also see like the focus of both of these writers. Another short book recommendation that I actually did read in one day, I have Home by Toni Morrison. I read this on sprints, so I, if I can remember which sprints it was, I will link them. But this is one of Toni Morrison's shorter books. I believe The Bluest Eye is also shorter. However, I don't know if I would recommend reading that one in one day because it is so heavy. But this is about a guy who is coming back from war, I believe, and he grew up in this town in the South. And he now lives in the Pacific Northwest. And he gets this message somehow that his sister is in trouble down in the South. So he's traveling back home and it's interspersed with his memories of being home and also things from her perspective and what has gone wrong in her life. And I don't know, this is a really powerful family story, which is something that I like. It's also very short to pack such punch. I do remember feeling 
like the ending just sort of happens because it is kind of a slice of life book, but I don't think you should let that deter you. Toni Morrison is one of my favorite authors. Next up, another thing that I, I think I listened to this in one morning while I was getting ready, but this is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And this is the first time that time travel was really used in sci-fi. And this came out when? 1895. So um, I think that's really cool. It's like one of the foundational sci-fi materials. And it's about this guy who is at this conference with other like world leaders of sorts, but in like the intellectual realm. And he's telling them about this time machine that he has created. It talks about him going to the far, far future and like what that is like. And it's a very interesting take on what the future would be like that I think a lot of sci-fi still kind of borrows from today. So I do think you should read this. I, it was really enjoyable. Another book that I did actually read in one day, Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I always get him confused with Charles Bukowski and I don't know why. I think it's just because they both have last names that end with ski and they were both like very popular when I was in high school and on Tumblr. So, but this is, if you haven't read this book yet, you absolutely should. The movie is also really good. I don't know if other people agree with that, but I really liked the adaptation. Um, again, it came out around the time that I had read the book. So it was like very powerful to me. I remember going to see it in theaters with some friends. This book is about this kid who is, for whatever reading he's writing, I think it's an epistolary is what it's called when you're writing letters, but he's writing letters and you don't know who he's writing letters to. Um, but you know, it's some sort of like therapeutic, exercise and he's talking about his life in high school and I think he's a freshman in this book and he makes friends with this group of seniors and it's just about him exploring his relationships with them something has happened like several very traumatic things have happened in his life um there's one thing that you don't find out until the very very end which is why he's writing these letters but then there are other things sprinkled throughout so this is definitely a very heavy book but I love this book I actually might reread this because it is so short like it's like 215 pages, but the print is, I guess it's pretty small. I don't know. I remember reading this like in an afternoon. I got home from whatever I was doing and then I'd finished it by dinner. Next up, I do have Call Me By Your Name by Andrea Seaman. I did not read this in one day, um, but I did go through a phase in 2021, I believe, where I read this book and then I watched the adaptation every night for like two weeks as I was going to bed because I was that obsessed with it. But it's Elio and all, oh, I don't remember the other one's name, Oliver? There's no way that's right. Oliver, yeah, Elio and Oliver, great memory, me. Um, but essentially Elio is a teenage boy who lives with his parents and they are in Italy, but his parents, his mom I think is from France and his dad is American and they're just like academics living in Italy for his dad's like academic project. I think he's an anthropologist maybe, I don't really know. But they have interns every summer. And so this summer it's this guy, Oliver, who is in college, he's from the US, he's like, I would guess like 20 right? Like that's about 2021. And it's about him and Elio developing this like relationship. And I don't know, it's like a very interesting romance because it felt very reminiscent of like when you did have a crush, because you're in Elio's perspective for the most part. But like, if you ever had a crush on someone and you just weren't sure how they felt about you, this is definitely how that read. And just like the feelings that they developed for each other. And then also, obviously, it's set in the 80s, they are gay. So they don't know really or they might not even be gay but like they don't know that aspect of themselves and like it's not really something that's talked about so they don't know how to sort of discuss it and I don't know they sort of fall into this relationship I really love this book I love the movie too I know that like not everybody loves both of them uh, but I did so this is like I want to reread this too now maybe I should Next up, we're coming up on two other books that I believe I did read in a day. So Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Bastidi. <laughs> Agustina Bastidica. Uh, this is a horror book. It's very disturbing. And it's basically set in a dystopian future in Argentina where you cannot eat animal meat anymore. And so they've started processing and packaging humans uh, the way that we process and package like beef, basically, um, which is really interesting, especially for Argentina, because Argentina is like the beef capital of the world, or one of them. Um, I'm not gonna get into an argument with you in the comments about it. But uh, when I live there, definitely like beef is the thing. Beef and soy, ironically. But anyways, this book follows this main character, who he's having issues with his wife, like marital issues. And it's just set in this strange dystopia where the like meat industry has changed to like humans. And what's interesting to me about this book is like this book is about this man and his wife. Like it's not about cannibalism, but it also is about, about cannibalism because cannibalism is all around them constantly. And just the way that this author was able to 
draw that in was so interesting to me. So um, I think this is being adapted in Argentina or has been adapted and I really want to watch the adaptation. I'm so curious about it. I love this book. This is like still one of the great, I think about the ending of this book constantly all the time. Another book that I did actually read in one day, Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. I read this again, I think in 2021. Um, it's very short. It's a like fantasy horror. And the premise is that it's set in the 20s where the Ku Klux Klan, it's right after, what is that movie called? The Birth of a Nation was like an extremely racist film that was made in the United States in 1915. I don't know, was that a silent movie? I'm really not sure. Um, but in the aftermath of that, a lot of people, like the Ku Klux Klan became like a very powerful entity. I don't know that it wasn't before, but like that movie really like, it's about the KKK and people, it like glorified the KKK basically. And then I've never seen it. so. Everything I'm telling you is things that I've heard. So if you know differently, feel free to sound off. I don't know. But this book is about this group of monster hunters because in this like fantasy world, that movie invited these monsters called Ku Kluxes. So some of the people in the KKK are just people who are bad people. And then some of them are these like actual demons. And this group of monster hunters is trying to track down the demons and kill them to save the US. It's so interesting. I will say I listened to this as an audiobook because it is written in dialect and I know this is a me problem. It's written in Gullah. Um, I have a really hard time reading things written in dialect. Um, I have three more books that I own that I'm going to talk about and all of these are books that I like didn't love but they are very short and at least two of them I did read in one day. So there's that. The first one I did not actually read this in one day but it's The Swimmers by Julia Tsuka. And this book I wanted to love, okay? And I might reread it because I think I just like rushed through the audiobook and didn't really pay as much attention as I probably could if I read it physically and I own it. I should read it physically at some point, but it's about this public pool, maybe private pool. It's like the YMCA has a pool, think like that, but like people have a membership to this pool and it's about all of these people going there to swim and then one day a crack appears in this pool. And it's about that. <laughs> I don't know how else to like describe it. Um, it's literary fiction. It's very well written. Um, but I remember leaving this book feeling kind of confused and I think if I read it again, I would get more of it because I would take my time with it. People really love this book though, so don't let my review deter you. And two other books. I have a short horror book that I read in one day that I didn't love, uh, but it's called The Job of the Wasp and it's about this kid at a boarding school and he's being bullied and like, I don't know, it goes from there. I liked this book. I didn't love it. I remember thinking like it was fine. I think there were parts of this book that I just didn't get, but I do remember it being very like vividly written. So if you like horror more than I do, you might like this. That's something that I'm learning about myself also. I don't love like books that people would classify as horror. Unless it's a horror book that gets like very mixed reviews, I don't tend to like it. Like Stephen King stuff, I'm not a super big fan of. Do with that what you will. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Vacation by Deb Allenfirth. In this book, is so interesting. So it's about this guy who thinks that his wife is having an affair. So he starts following, I think what happens is like, he starts following his wife and then a man starts following him or he notices that a man is following his wife or his wife is following a man, something like that. There's a train of people following each other and then trying to figure out like what's going on. It's not a mystery though. So I went into this thinking it was a mystery and that it is not. But I did really enjoy this book when I read it but I just remember being confused as to what I was getting into. But I, do, I want more people to read it because I think it's a very interesting concept. So those are the books that I own. I have a couple more that I want to run through that are short books that I don't own for whatever reason, but I do love. So first up, I'm going to talk about the Heartstopper series. That's graphic novel series. It's the only graphic novels that I really like enjoyed reading. I am not a graphic novel girly, but I do love Nick and Charlie. So I think if you like graphic novels, they're a great way to go. And the Heartstopper ones are very popular for a reason. They're very cute. I've only read the first three, so I cannot speak to the last one. And I will say the third is my least favorite. The first is probably my favorite and the second. I like both of those. Also Cover Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. I did read this in one day. I believe it was my first book of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And it is a horror book that is like snapshot. It's like very short. It's like a hundred pages probably. But it is about a woman who describes her life and she has the perfect husband. And then the more she's talking about things, the more you realize that like something is wrong. And that's all I'm really gonna say about it. For a short story collection that I wanna recommend is Sing To It by Amy Hempel. This entire thing is like 150 pages. And I listened to this one afternoon while I was cooking dinner. It made me sob. There's this one short story that it's the one that I like really remember from it. 
called Full Service Shelter, I think. And it's about a woman who works at an animal shelter that is a full service shelter, which means that they will put an animal down. And it's about that process. And oh boy, it's very sad. So just know what you're going, you're getting into when you read that one. Brother by David Chariandi is under 200 pages. And that is one of my favorite books that I read in 2020. It's about this guy who lives in, I think Toronto. He lives in an immigrant neighborhood in Toronto. And at some point you find out his brother is like missing or gone, not missing, but like his brother is no longer there. And everyone knows why, but the reader doesn't know why. And so as you're reading the book, you sort of figure out what happened and it goes back and forth in time. I love this book. I think more people should read it. I don't, I don't hear anyone talking about it. Anytime someone talks about Brother, they're talking about that extreme horror book. But I'm always talking about this book. It's like a literary fiction book. It's so good. And another horror that is a very short read. Um, I'm thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. This again has an adaptation. I actually did a book versus adaptation review of this book a few years ago now. But this is again, one of the most disturbing books I've ever read. And this one actually did really throw me off. I haven't read We Spread by Ian Reid, but I want to because of how much I love this book. But this is about a guy and his girlfriend and you're in the girlfriend's perspective and she's going to meet his, pa his parents. I think they're gonna stay for the weekend or something. And she wants to break up with him. So she's like, you're in her head as she's thinking about how to end this relationship. And then that's what it's about, but that's also not what it's about at all. It's such a good book. Those are the books. I don't know how many books that is, but hopefully you found some things that you would like to read that you can put on your TBR. These are books that I think you could easily read in a day or a weekend. They're very short reads. They're all under 300 pages and most of them are under 250 pages, which again, to me, that's like an evening of reading, like after work, if I really did just want to sit down and read or like a Saturday, you know? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to leave your favorite short book recommendations down below because I'm always interested in picking up more shorter fiction that I can just read in a day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already because I do post two videos every single week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!